welcome you guys to Boyd Hill Nature Preserve. My name is Amy De Palma, and I'm one of the rangers here. If you've never been to Boyd Hill before, um, we are a large nature center on the south side of St. Pete. We have just under six miles of trails, um, but the coolest thing that we have here is our aviary, where we house 20 permanently injured, non-releasable birds of prey. So throughout this video, we're gonna be telling you about what a bird of prey is, you're all, how we care for them, and also you're gonna get an up close look at some of our birds that we have here. I hope you enjoy. So what is a bird of prey, or also known as a raptor? So these are birds that have these special feet. They have really, really strong, strong feet with sharp talons at the end of it that are able to grab and kill their prey. They also have to have really great eyesight some birds of prey can actually see up to a mile away. They also have a sharp hooked beak that they use to help shred their prey. And they also have a carnivorous diet, so they only eat meat. So these birds don't eat any seeds or berries, just meat for them. Now there are five main groups of birds of prey or raptors. So the first ones I'm gonna talk about are diurnal raptors. So first up we have the eagles. So here in the U.S. we have that bald eagle and the golden eagle. Next we have the hawks. And these are just two of those hawks that you can find here in Florida. The red-shouldered hawk and the red-tailed hawk. Next up we have the falcons. So the falcons here we have our American kestrel and a peregrine falcon. And last but not least, these birds are considered raptors or birds of prey, but they're slightly different, but they still fit into the group. They are the vultures, our turkey and our black vulture. Now those are our diurnal birds of prey, meaning that those birds are mostly active during the daytime. That's when they're gonna be hunting, looking for their food. The next bird of prey that I'm going to show you guys are actually our nocturnal, or also known as our crepuscular uh, bird of prey. Now these birds will hunt in low light to no light. So these are the owls. Both of these owls here are crepuscular. You have your great horned owl and your barred owl. So it's all about the eyes, the beak, the feet and the diet to be considered a raptor or also known as a birds of prey. So now I'm going to show you some bio artifacts. Um, some of them are replicas and some are actually from the real birds. And I'm going to show you some of those key characteristics that make these birds of prey um, raptors. So the first I want to show you is I have a great horned owl skull and a bald eagle skull. These are both replicas. But I want to point out these large eyes on both of them. This is to allow them to see either really far away, like your bald eagle, or like your great horned owl in low light. I also want to point out this really sharp hooked beak. This is what they use to help shred their prey um, when they're eating. So they don't have a fork and a knife, uh, they use their beak to actually shred their prey and eat it. I also have the most important thing um, evolved to be a raptor is your strong, strong feet um, and talons. So what's unique about these birds is they have special tendons in each toe that actually lock into place. So when we squeeze our hand for a while, our hands get really red and tired and our grip strength actually weakens. When a raptor grabs onto their prey or their perch, those toes lock into place so it continues to the same pressure until they want to let go. These toes don't get tired, which is such a unique, cool feature to have um, that allows them to actually squeeze their prey either to death or enough to be able to hold it and use their beak to help kill it. But their grip strengths are really strong. Um, and then aside from having really strong grip strengths, they have these needle-like talons attached to their toes. So their nails are just like ours, but just really long and pointed. So with a really strong grip strength, plus these needle-like talons, their prey stands no chance when they're trying to take it down. So this is the most important part of a raptor or bird of prey, is you have to have these nice strong feet um, with these sharp talons to be able to catch and kill your prey. Now I have a fun little experiment I wanna do with you guys today. I actually have a grip strength reader, and I'm going to show you my grip strength 
and then we're going to see where it compares to with real raptors. So here I am, I'm going to squeeze this here. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have a grip strength of about 83 pounds per square inch. So seems pretty strong, right? But until you look over here at our <laughs> birds of prey. So down here we have our sharp shinned hawk that has about 10 pounds per square inch. So I'm stronger than them. I'm even all the way stronger than our Cooper's hawk, which is about 75 pounds per square inch. So I fit in between this Cooper's Hawk and Peregrine Falcon, where your Peregrine Falcon has 100 pounds per square inch. But remember this Great Horned Owl that you saw earlier? They actually have up to 506 pounds per square inch, all the way up to a Harpy Eagle, which is an eagle that lives in the Amazon that will actually eat monkeys. They have up to 4,000 pounds per square inch. So imagine that with these needle sharp talons grabbing onto their prey, it's a no brainer. That's the best way that they can kill and catch their prey. So that's what raptors are, um, are birds of prey. Um, really so another aspect of our bird of prey program is actually managing or keeping these birds alive. So just like you would have um, yourself or a pet so you have to do the basic care um, for these raptors as well. So that basic care includes um, feeding them as well as making sure they have fresh water and cleaning their aviaries. So our birds get a varied diet of mice and rats, quail, beef heart, chicks, and chicken. So this is similar to diets that they would see in the wild. We also mix it up because just like us, we don't like to eat the same thing every day. The birds don't like to eat the same thing every day. So that's what we're gonna, that's what you see here. Um, today is actually rat day. So you'll see all of our different birds um, have their own cups with their different size amount of food. So your eagle is going to be getting a lot more food than what your small little kestrel would be getting. Um, we also, to care for these birds, we have to clean their aviaries. So as you can see, um, we have large aviaries with sand in the bottom, so we have to have a volunteer or staff member go in and actually scoop up their poop. Um, and we also um, have to change out their water daily. Uh, we rake and make sure and maintain that it is looking fresh and clean for the visitors to see, as well as for the birds to be happy and healthy. So next time if you're getting older and you are about 16 years old, you can actually come volunteer and help us participate in these daily care activities for these birds of prey. So for our first avian ambassador, I have Dancer, and he is a red-tailed hawk. Now Dancer is 19 years old, which for a raptor, that's pretty old. Uh, so how I know that he is a red-tailed hawk is if you look at his beautiful rusty red tail, as well as this beautiful belly band going across his stomach. So those are great key identifiers when you're looking at different types of hawks are those two features right there. But remember, we're talking about raptors and birds of prey, which is all about those eyes, beak, and feet. So you see his beautiful eyes there, that sharp hooked beak, and those beautiful sharp talons. While he's this way, you'll notice that this right wing droops out a little bit. So all of these birds are permanently injured, non-releasable birds of prey. So Dancer here was stained a wing injury. He actually broke the, this wing by flying into power lines. So when he was less than a year old, uh, people found him on the ground um, and called a wildlife rehabber, which is exactly what you should do when you find an injured bird on the ground is call a wildlife rehabilitator and they'll actually come out and help birds like Dancer. So even though Dancer was injured pretty young, um, he is a great avian ambassador here at Boyd Hill. So next we have our um, barred owl, Aldo. He is three years old and he is here because of a wing injury. 
So Aldo was actually caught in fishing line um, and they had to remove the outer tip of his wing so he can no longer fly. Now most people don't think of owls being caught in fishing line because they don't think of them as living near wetland habitats. But barred owls love to live near swamps and rivers and lakes. So next time you're out there, keep an ear out for these birds because they're most likely heard, not seen. They sound like, who cooks for you? Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Now they're mostly not seen because of their beautiful camouflage. You'll notice the barring on his chest and his colorations would blend in perfectly with an oak tree. So the next time you're out fishing, make sure that you take all your fishing line back with you so you can help birds like Aldo. So this is Carson, our female American kestrel. Now Carson is here for a very unique situation. Physically, she is perfectly healthy. There's nothing wrong with her. Her wings are fine, her talons are fine, her eyes are fine. Um, her injury is more mental. So these birds um, are protected under the Migratory Bird Act, so you have to actually have special permitting in order to own them or have them. They are not pets, and they do not make great pets. So someone actually took Carson out of the wild and decided to try to raise her as their own. When they found out that it was illegal, um, they turned her into a wildlife rehabilitator where she was then deemed non-releasable. So why might you ask if she's perfectly healthy physically, why did she have to be in captivity for the rest of her life? So Carson, uh, she actually looks to people for food. She does not go out and look for her own food. Even when it's sprinkling rain, she screams and yells to want to come back inside. So she does not know that she is a kestrel. She thinks she's more one with the people. Uh, American kestrels are really unique. Uh, they are one of the only raptors that actually have different colors between males and females. So she is a female kestrel. So you'll see that barring on her chest and the barring on the back. And ke American kestrels are actually one of the smallest species of falcons in North America. So when most people see this bird, they think of how could that bird be a raptor? What kind of prey items would it eat? And actually, she'll eat uh, birds about her size, uh, little small sparrows, um, or even large insects or small mammals. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you guys here at Boyd Hill Nature Preserve. If you want more information about the preserve, follow the link below um, and we hope to see you here.